everybody, and welcome back to Outcast Studios. I hope you've all had a good day. My day's been, uh, it's been alright. But yes, welcome back not only to Outcast Studios, but to Anadonia. So, where we last left off, I believe it was with the completion of this nifty little thing right here. The wireless terminal, okay? This thing is linked into our ME system, uh, in its entirety. Everything that is inside of our ME system we can access from anywhere on the planet now, which is absolutely brilliant. We don't have much of value in here right now, but the fact that we have access to this storage at all is, once again, just brilliant. Just flat out brilliant. So, you might be thinking, what comes next on the list of things that we've got to do? Well, according to this board, it would be remove the chest monster and increase ME storage, but, uh, we've already done that. We can finally take this off the board. So, what else do we have? Get SPR filled, brew is another memory restoration potion that we're saving. Uh, the next one on the list says, make the lower tier of the base more accessible. I don't know what that means because i mean if we go in here very quickly and we just go down into the basement this is as accessible as you could possibly want i mean we go down a layer further we've got the halo area and then if we come through here we have the portal room the, we have the nether portal room i don't know what about this is not accessible so under the assumption that i've already done something to fix this to complete this goal I'm gonna take it off the board, just like that. And that only leaves us with number seven, which is clear away the duping abomination, which if you didn't know, is that pile of stuff over there. It feels like so long ago now, but this is all leftover stuff from the live stream when we rebuilt the Anadonia base when we put the walls up. But we've kind of just left it here because it would be that big of a hassle to clear all of this stuff away. But I think now that we just have the wireless terminal in our pocket, this shouldn't be too big of a job. So let's just start clearing this stuff out. I was about to say much easier said than done then, but um, when did we have a spare Klein star in here? I'm pretty sure this is at full charge as well, which is interesting. Huh. I mean, my Klein Star is uh, still looking pretty full, so I don't think we'll need this one for a while. And let's just throw all of this stuff up here. There we go. Perfect solution to all our storage problems. Now, are you ready to see the server break? Because I am. Ali, up. Oh dear lord. My frames have dropped to four. This is insane. Okay, let's get all of this stuff, stuff up and in here, shall we? I'm surprised all of that fit. I'm gonna be real honest, I wasn't expecting that to actually go as smooth as it did. That's really impressive. You know what, let's go and check on the ME system itself, shall we? I don't quite remember how many of these I had in the last episode set up, uh, but in between episodes, I ran some Fluix cable behind the back just so all of these slots could be enabled. Um, as for the rest of these, uh, most of this just comes from AFKing on the server and letting the system tick over. Uh, I mean, over here we've got, uh, this is not full, not full, not full. Uh, a lot of these are nearly full. The orange is uh, nearly full. It means that all of the types have been filled out, but not all of the items. The red ones mean that it's completely full, completely full. The blue one means not all of the item types have been used. And I'm pretty sure green just means they haven't been touched yet. So we've got quite a bit of storage still to go looking at these lights. Most of it's probably being taken up by the 20,000 logs that we have in storage though. Either way, now that we've cleared away the duping abomination, we can once again take this off the board of things to do. I don't know how to fix that issue, by the way. Sorry about that. I fixed one issue where it wasn't loading in the corner of my vision. I've now got this issue where blocks seem to have a halo at all times, which is really irritating. But with all of the things on the board that we can do, done. You might be asking what's left. Well, this right here, this is what is left, okay? This building, you've never seen it before, that's because we haven't built it yet. This building is going to have something very important to our progress on Anadonia. Uh, but before I can actually put anything inside, I need to show you how I built it. So Maestro, if you please.
Pretty good time lapse. Am I right? I found a new way of doing them, and I think it's really fun, and I like the way they work. The building itself, not a big fan of it, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know, I just think the building itself looks weird, and I don't know how to fix it, because I'm not good at building. But as a building, it serves its purpose. Really? We're out of travertine? Not the prettiest torch job in the world, but I mean, it's better than having mobs spawn in here. But yeah, my gripes about the building aside, there's a reason I built the building. It's because this is going to house something very important to the future development of the Anadonia base. Now, if I could just take this controller here, we can take the elevator down. How, what do you think of the elevator, by the way? It's very compact. We can take the elevator down and we can see what's down here. Bet you didn't see this part in the time lapse, did you? So anyway, right now it's a big old pile of nothing. It is just an empty spherical area. What we're gonna put in here, however, is really impressive. We are going to be using this space to fill with these void miners, okay? I've wanted to build a void miner in this series for a long time. Uh, especially because digital miners, while they are cool, they're not void miner cool. I'm pretty sure the big difference between them is that the digital miner can only pull up ores from this uh, dimension. I could be wrong. It's been a long time since I've seen one. Yeah, an auto miner that can mine whatever block you tell it to within a 32 block radius. That could be useful for the early game. But if we get a void miner, it can pull up ores from any dimension and it can pull them up out of thin air. It essentially spawns them in. That's how it works, but it does it at random. So you might get nether quartz or you could get all the modium. And the higher tier you have, the better the miner is. For example, the highest tier, tier eight, requires xerothium crystals, a block of diamond, the nanorite void miner, and a laser core. And the xerothium crystals can only be gotten, I believe, there's not even a thing in any eye for it. They can only be gotten from the previous tier of miner, the nanorite miner. Same thing goes for the nanorite crystals. You need an aetherium void miner. Aetherium requires ionite, requires palladium, requires chironite, requires erodium, requires litharite. And litharite can be made with basic materials that you can find in this diamond. Mention. For example, the crystals you craft. But that is to say, if we want the highest tier, we've got to start with the lowest tier. We can't just skip there. So that is the plan for the first half of today's session. It's not all we've got in the works, but it is the first half. Now, if you hover over the void miners themselves and hold shift, it tells you everything you will need to build this tier of void miner. So for example, the litharite void miner requires 20 frames that are tier one, 18 panels, four IO block or frame blocks, two modifiers, two laser cores, and one laser lens holder. So I say we get that stuff. I'm gonna write it down in a list so I don't have to keep checking this, and we're gonna just craft all of this stuff. And then you'll get to see me fumble to try and put it together. But of course first, Eepy time. And that's the litharite void miner onto the rest of the stuff. There we go, and then let's grab 18 of these guys. Okay, it says it wants four IO block or more frames, and the IO blocks that we have are item output, FE output, FE input, null IO, and that's it. Null, I'm guessing, does nothing. FE input allows you to input energy, and item output allows you to output items. So if it needs four of these, let's do three FE input. No, let's do one FE input and three item outputs. So in order to make an FE input, there are several ways of doing it. But for the tier one, I just need a block of redstone, a structure panel, two iron, and a litharite in connect or interconnect. Very easy, very, very easy. We can do this quite simply. The item outputs are simple enough. I just need a regular null IO block, some iron and a hopper. And the null IO, also very simple. There we go, brilliant. So we have the void miner, we have the structure frames, we have the structure panels, we have an FE input so we can give it power, and we have three separate item outputs so we can extract at three times the regular rate. What's left? 
two modifiers, two laser cores, and a laser lens holder. Well, let's have a look and see what the modifiers are. So we have the null modifier, which modifies, modifies nothing. We have the amplification modifier, which, amp which does nothing. And the bandwidth modifier, which also does nothing. The frequency modifier, which does nothing. And the radiant modifier, which does nothing. I don't know what any of these are for. Let me do a little bit of research very quickly. Okay, so looking at this guide, I'm going to need a mix between bandwidth modifiers and frequency modifiers. So let's have a look very quickly for the bandwidth modifier. For the bandwidth modifier, ooh, they're only available on the higher levels. That's interesting. In order to craft the lowest level of bandwidth modifier, the ionine one, I need an ionine interconnect, which would require ionite crystals, which I can't get at this level. So I'm going to assume that for now, I don't need a modifier. I just need null modifiers, something blank that I can then replace in the future. So let's grab four of these. Then I need a laser core and a laser lens holder. So let's type in laser core. I mean, we've already made one of these before, but let's just grab this anyway. And we also need the laser lens holder, which requires two laser cores. So let's just Let's stick this one laser core in here and then pull three out. Right then, that should be everything we need for the tier one lithorite void miner. So at the risk of looking stupid, let's go figure out how to use it. Well, it's not an episode of Anadonia without a crash. What I was going to do as I got in here was I was going to build up and place down the void miner. Get it? Build up to build down. A place down shit. And would you look at that? The void man has got a place right here. A pretty, pretty place. So let's put it down. And then let's right click it. So this thing has the ability to auto build itself. But in order to do that, uh, we have to click on auto utility. And what's this? Forward direction down, up direction south? Forward direction north, forward direction, up direction west? I, uh, preview. Okay, interesting. Wait, are they? Oh, these are physical blo blocks. They're ghost blocks. This looks like something that works, right? You know what? This one looks fine. Forward direction down, up direction north. So if we click on, I'm going to assume build multi-block, it should do it for us. Never mind, that completely failed. Missing panel position, missing laser core. I, they're all right here in my inventory. What more could you want from me? And then if I build multi block. Okay, that worked. It, it worked. It placed them. That's brilliant. All it said was uh, missing laser core at position here. And for some reason, these ghost blocks are still, well, ghost blocks. Um, hmm. So I'm guessing if I put you here, but, uh, uh, did that just steal that from me? Did that just steal that e energy uh, thing from me? Because that's incredibly insulting if it did. And what about the null modifier? Oh, well, that's back. What about the null modifiers? What do, I d what do I do with the null modifiers? Where do they go? Do they go here? No, because these are, these are structure panels. I don't understand. What am I doing wrong? What if I do preview again? Null modifier, nothing, nothing, null modifier. But it asked for four, didn't it? It asked, oh, it did only ask for two modifiers. I didn't realize. Okay, I guess we didn't need four. We just needed two. We need one here. So let's get rid of that first. And then one here. What, what the hell are you? Okay, and with those in place, this should now be fully functional, I believe. Mineable drops. Th this is um empty. Let's remove the dirt trail. And I guess we just have to start providing this thing with power. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's grab some power cables. Okay, so I've ran some cabling all the way up from underneath, all the way to the outside around the back of this new building. And I'm looking to grab a solar panel, ideally one of our higher tier ones that we actually 
have access to. Uh, I have the photovoltaic cells in the uh, wireless terminal. I don't know why we have so many of them. I, I guess they have an EMC value, yeah? Which is weird because the higher tiers of actual solar panels don't. Um, but all we need is the... Uh, Right, that's why it was a pain in the ass. Uh, give me a second, I'm gonna go make the solar panel. Oh, of course, when we finally get the solar panels, it's it's night time. Okay, let's let's quickly go EP time. Okay, brilliant. It's storing up EMC whilst also transferring it, even if it doesn't have the highest night level, because obviously it's in a pretty terrible place for that. Uh, it's still generating power whilst being siphoned, which means that we can at, we can beat the system. It will never run out of power as long as it stays sunny. But this thing doesn't always have to be running 24-7. It'd be useful, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have to. I just realized I never left a trapdoor at the top of this, so I can't actually get down through it, for God's sake. Really? Re really? Okay. So this thing is clearly powered now. This whole thing should have power. If we check on the system, though, it's still not storing any energy, which isn't looking good. I don't know how to fix this. Wait a second, now isn't that interesting? That's the laser lens focus, but it's actually a ghost block. That's not a real block. So the question is, where the hell did it put my laser lens focus? Because it sure as hell not in my inventory. Well, let's see what happens when we put the other laser lens in. It was requesting one at that position, but it didn't say anything about them. Duration still negative one, tick cost is still zero, energy storage is still nothing. I feel like we're missing something, because it, it wants something in this slot. And we don't have an actual lens. These aren't from Envirotech. This is industrial foregoing. We do have a lens, though. We can make the regular lens using glass, but the crystal lens is what we need to get the next tier of crystals. And there's no recipe for it. So I'm going to assume we get a crystal lens through some other transitive means. But for now... We've got to actually, uh, we've got to build a regular lens from the looks of it, I think. All right, then we have four lenses. They have an EMC value, so it's not like we're ever going to run out. We can throw them up here, and that still does nothing. Got plenty of Batania lens, astral, so astral sorcery lenses, uh, elemental craft lenses, lens grinder? I don't know how that works. Yeah, it's the only lens in the mod, so what? the hell does it want? Oh, now that's interesting. I managed to right-click a lens onto the uh, the actual void miner there, and it did a thing. It's like got a, a, a beacon beam, I think? Unless I'm just hallucinating that. Uh, so what I'm thinking is maybe if I place another one on the bottom, like that. There we go. And then if I take these out of here, and I mine this... I can then right click into the actual laser core? Maybe? I'm not entirely sure. It's still not... It's powered, but it's not at the same time, and this is really getting on my nerves. Okay, so I was, in fact, right. There was something I was missing. So, the first thing that I'm gonna need from the wireless terminal... Do we have a hopper? No, we don't. Okay, I'll make one uh, in a second. I need two new things. I need a flash card and a memory programmer. I'm gonna need a CPU, a structure panel, two volatile memories, and some obsidian plates. It's not something I can do down here. I'm gonna have to go back to the actual uh, machine room. Bit of an odd place to put it, but I'm putting it here because this whole thing requires power. Now, the way this works is I've created two sets of flash memory. I don't care about botanic miners. I don't care about multi-miners, mainly because I don't know what that is. I need one flash card to install the ore miner program, specifically, oh god, there's so many, what? Mineral, metallic, gemstone, or magical? I don't know which one's which. Um, let's go with, uh, let, let's, let's, let's go with magical. Let's install the magical ore miner flash memory program. And then, let's install, if we go back, there we go, Crystal Miner. I admittedly don't know what the rest of these are supposed to be, but the reason we need the Ore Miner and the Crystal Miner is because that device that we just made, the Void Miner, 
doesn't just randomly pull crystals out of the void anymore. You have to run a very specific program on them in order to do that. So what we're going to do to test to see if this works is we're going to plug the ore miner in first, and then we're going to plug the crystal miner in. Okay, so now all we do, we don't put the lenses in here. We plug the flash... How... Okay, that's weird. We plug the flash memory in here, and giving it a second, that should give us a tick cost. Or not, because apparently there's still something wrong with the goddamn system. What is wrong with you? Hello? I just tried rebuilding the whole system. It said missing laser core again. But we have the laser core. What, what laser core is missing? We have a spare laser lens holder. Laser core. Okay, so I've re-looked over it, and I've actually gone in and looked at what this specific block is. It's this one, here. It's a laser core. It wants a second laser core. I didn't think it needed more than one. Litherite laser, two laser cores. I must have misread it. Let me go grab another one. Okay, so this is my final attempt at fixing this for today. If this doesn't work, then... Oh! I'm guessing that's a good sign. Uh, brilliant, right, so, yeah, there we go, it's storing energy, so if I stick this in, let's just skip straight to the crystal miner, because maybe there's an off chance that it could possibly give us the higher tier crystals. There we go, it's fighting with itself, it's draining very quickly, but it's just as quick being provided power, so we should be fine. Now if we check the chest... Nothing yet. Energy storage is going down. Mineable drops. Here we go. So we can get up to the Lons Delight crystal. We can get Erodium, which is tier 2. We can get Lithrite, which is tier 1. I have no idea what Lons Delight is. Lons Delight. Is that tier 3? Lons... Lons... Z Delight. It's not any of them. But it's used to make the Ionite tier of things. And I- oh, and, and, and Palladium. You know, what are the tiers of these? Lithrite, Erodium, Chironite, Palladium, Ionite, Athium, Nanorite, and Zerothium. So it can technically help us get up to tier 5, skipping over tier 3 and 4. But it's a very rare chance of that happening. According to this, it's a 6.25% chance. And looking at this, it's gonna go incredibly slowly. One thing I do want to test, though... Do you think this whole thing would be affected by the watch of flowing time? Oh, I forgot I turned them off! So one of the crashes that I had a couple of sessions back now was caused by the watches of flowing time. It wouldn't even let me into the server, and because of that, I had to turn them off to get rid of the effect. So it... <laughs> I, I, I can't even test that one because I can't use the, use the damn watch. I guess all I'm going to have to do is AFK here. So you know what? Just to ensure I'm shit. That wasn't even English. Just to ensure that I'm safe while I AFK here, let's get torching. There we go, nice and safe. So, I'm just gonna AFK up here and wait for this thing to give me some crystals. And, uh, well, you'll see me in, like, I don't know, a couple of seconds. I'm gonna call it here for tonight on myself. So I will see you guys in some sort of morning. And jump cut! Right then, welcome back. So, uh, where I last left off yesterday, we had just finished, all the way over there, the Tier 1 Void Miner. And while that thing's been going, unfortunately my game crashed pretty much immediately after I left it to AFK. So we do not have the required crystals needed today to make the Tier 2. Instead, until we get those crystals, we're going to focus on my next overall goal for uh, this session slash the end of season two, which is killing the ender dragon. Now you might think, oh, why do we need to prepare for that? We have more than enough tools capable of killing the ender dragon. Well, I don't just want to kill the ender dragon. I want to eviscerate the Ender Dragon. You see, I don't know if you remember, all the way back at the start of Season 1, me and Ruby had our own individual goals with Anadonia. Mine was that I wanted to use it to enjoy playing Minecraft again. Ruby's was just he wanted to kill the Ender Dragon. So I'm gonna make sure he can accomplish that goal, no matter how badly he attempts to get up. And to do that, I essentially want to collect the most overpowered gear in the mod pack that I can at this level, uh, in order to take into battle. And in order to do that, I'm kind of just gonna keep scrolling through the NEI window 
until I see something that looks, uh, I don't know, powerful or interesting. For example, these cores look amazing. I have no idea what they're for. Uh, I have no idea how to use them, but they look cool. Same as the pulsating black hole. That sounds powerful. Uh, but also, I don't think it has a crafting recipe. Neither does the ATM star anymore, which is quite concerning. But I mean, look at this armor. All the modium armor. This is supposed to be the most powerful armor in the game. It has a hundred, uh, oh wait, no. Well, the modium isn't the most powerful. The most powerful is unobtainium. The most powerful armor in the game is unobtainium. How do you make unobtainium? You need, uh, do 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 do. You need to smelt down unobtainium ore. Yep, there's no other way of getting it. It just has to be unobtainium ore. So, it can only be found in the end Highlands biome. So you might be thinking, oh, how can we get on Obtanium if we can't go to the end because we'd have to fight the Ender Dragon? Well, normally I'd just use the TARDIS to zip on over there, but since we don't have access to that, I think that should be our next goal. We've got to find a way into the end and out again without having killed the Ender Dragon. Now, my first thought is Waystones. I feel like Waystones is a good way of doing this, but I don't think you can actually transcend dimensions using waystones. Then again, I don't know if I've ever tried. So let's try it. Let's grab a waystone. Let's head down into the nether and let's see if we put this down and we name it nether portal. Okay, it does work across dimensions. If I hit the village of guys view, I'm at the statue of the seven. And if I go back in here and I hit nether portal, I'm in the nether. Ah, I can't access my wireless terminal in here though. As much as the AE booster card works across the entirety of the overworld, it doesn't work transdimensionally. But that doesn't matter because we've just proven to ourselves that the waystone can work transdimensionally. So we've got one method of getting back out. But I'm not just satisfied with one method of escape because I have no way of confirming if it just works across the overworld and the nether and won't work in the end. I might still be trapped. So I need another failsafe. And the second thing that comes to mind is using a matter transmitter and a matter receiver from RF tools. I don't know if we have the required things in here to use them, but it's the second best option, I believe. Uh, yeah, we even have the dialing device. And it doesn't look too expensive. Let's go make some of these. Okay, so the way this one works is a little more complicated than the way the last one works. The way this one works is it's almost like an actual teleportation beam. I need to find somewhere to plug this into. Not ideal putting them out there, or out here rather, but it should do. If I put one here, and then I put one here, these should start charging with power. And then if I stick the dialing device in between them, it should connect to both of them. Okay, so right here, this is the uh, dialing device uh, in interface, right? So looking at this, I'm gonna assume that this is the entry point. This is what it's linked to. These are the names of the dimensions that we can call up. We have the overworld, which is, you know, the overworld, and we have a place called the void. This isn't the uh, end. This is just a void. If I hit dial once, it dialed up, and the beam is here. I can step into the beam, and it will take me... Oh my god. Uh... Hmm. It killed me, but it took me here. Interesting. Ah, crap. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna let me break any of this. Damn it. Okay, I believe it's the atmosphere of the dimension that's killing me, because I should be able to survive here, and I don't know why I can't. Well, that's another win in the teleportation column. The warp stone worked from the RF dimensions dimension, meaning that even... Oh, hang on. As I was saying, meaning if even if the uh, dimensional warp stone thing, this thing, the, the waystone, doesn't work. There's a chance our warp stone still will. Now, I'm gonna undial this, and in order to test whether or not we can set up a way back from uh, another dimension, I'm going to need something more than just the solar panels that I made. I'm going to need a generator, because not every dimension 
well, has solar power. So I'm going to take the coal generator. And I'm going to take some coal. And we're going to go and set this thing up in another dimension. And I don't just mean the nether. I'm talking about super hell. So anyway, you can see how messed up this place is, right? It's, it's, it's super hell. You know, this, this place is the most messed up you can possibly get. I mean, the skeletons fire flaming arrows, for God's sake. If we just clear some space on the on the deck of this ship, if we clear some space out, if we put down the matter receiver, the matter transmitter, and the DHD, we stick the coal generator in behind, and we feed it some coal, we should be able to select uh, the overworld and dial all. Dialing device power low. Ah, it doesn't have enough power because it's busy charging this one. Damn. Everything in here is now fully powered. If I select overworld and select dial, we have a connection. If I step through, we've exited the matter receiver on this end. And we're back in the overworld. Okay, so even though it takes a while to charge, if I now hit the other, hit dial, I can step through and be in the other. If I interrupt the connection on this end so that it doesn't burn through fuel, that's perfect. We have two confirmed ways of getting in and out of dimensions. Before I leave, I'm actually just going to go around and collect a little more vibranium ore. Because if I look at uh, the Vibranium armor, it's the second best armor in the game, as far as I'm aware. It costs 24... V oh, I have exactly the amount I need for one set of armor, never mind. I, um, I guess I'm not gonna go, go and do that. Uh, <laughs> so, with two methods of getting in and out of the overworld secured, the next task would obviously be getting to the end. But before we go to the end, just because I now have this Vibranium, I think I want to create a set of Vibranium armor. Now, as you might have noticed, all Vibranium armor still requires all the Modium armor. So, we need to find a little more all the Modium. We have some already, but we need more. Now, it's found in any ocean biome between Y5 and Y45, and we know where to find an ocean biome. So I say we we go we go we go get some. Let's go get some. Right then, here we are, ocean biome. Now I've got to go down to Y45. Brilliant. Now to just start mining out the ocean floor. I had my time stolen from me. So look at all of this destruction. How much all the modium do you think I collected from all of this destruction that over the course of about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, maybe 32, 16? No, six. All of this destruction, and this isn't even all of it, but all of this destruction, and it took me, it left me with six all the modium ore. So after that, I decided, hmm, maybe this is a horrible idea. And I looked into other ways that we could find all the modium when I remembered that all the modium sight potions, as well as every other type of sight potion, exist. So I brewed some using some all the modium powder that I got from the all the modium that we already had. And as you can see, I was able to click gather quite a bit. That isn't all just from mining though, because one benefit of having the create mod installed is that you can grind it down into crushed ore, and when you smelt crushed ore, you get more ingots than you would from just smelting the ore itself, because there's a chance that you can get two crushed ore per one block of ore, which is why I now have 36 all the modium and 39 vibranium. But I just want to show you the tunnel that I made once I drank the all the modium sight potion. I went ham just all throughout the underground of the ocean trying to find this stuff, because it is such a rare block, but at the same time, it's not. It's it's so difficult to find. Like, every single one of these offshoots was caused by me finding some all the modium. Either way, now that I've got all of the resources I need, I can actually start to make some all the modium armor. But before we do that, I do just want to check, unobtainium, do you need all the modium to craft unobtainium? No, you need the vibranium to craft the unobtainium. So, if we make all the modium and upgrade it to vibranium, we will then use the vibranium to get the all the modium, which means technically we need two sets of armor if I want both me and Ruby to have some, which, um, is not too bad because 
Vibranium is quite common in Super Hell, and all the modium is pretty easy to get once you have all the modium site potions. I think we have one of those left over. It's it's the unobtainium. I don't know how obtainable unobtainium is gonna be because I've never been to the end yet. I feel kind of bad using this stuff to like make a helmet just because even though it's not as good, my gem helmet that does three armor instead of a hundred. Uh, has the night vision, and to be completely honest, I'd prefer night vision to water breathing, so... Eh. But looking at that, we actually got quests uh, for uh, making all of this, uh, all the modium armor, which is pretty funny. So if we grab a reward of a vibranium nugget, a vibranium nugget, a vibranium nugget, and a vibranium nugget, um... We should be done with everything in this area. Now all we've got to do is we have to surround the Aldermodium with the Vibranium, like that. There we go, we now have a full set of Vibranium, which once again has given us quite the reward, uh, quite the amount of rewards to check off in this book here. Although this time it's uh, giving us Unobtainium Nuggets, which is actually quite thoughtful of it. So I guess if I just take off my old Netherite armor, I can store this away. Uh, in here, and if only temporarily, I can put on the Vibranium armor. All piglins become neutral, immune to all damage sources using fire and lava, protection from damage sources using wither, magic resistance immune to nausea, no fall damage, piglins become neutral, and what was the helmet again? Water breathing and no crash damage when flying with an elytra. So I can take this off. It doesn't mean I'm going to lose my night vision, but oh well. And if you look at that, our armor bar is actually green, which is quite fun. So, what's the next step of this plan? Obviously, it's to go to the end, find a way onto an end island, and then try and find some unobtainium. But there's two sort of, uh, I guess, flaws with that plan. Number one is the lore of the world. I don't know if you know this, but in uh, Outcast Studios lore, there's only one end gate per planet because, you know, not to get into the complexities of lore or anything, but they were built by an ancient race of civilizations that colonized the stars way before any other creature existed within the universe, and they lead to a uh, pocket dimension outside of time that loops forever and ever, uh, as a prison for the Ender Dragon. But the actual um, issue with going to the end to try and get Unobtainium is that Unobtainium can only be found in End Highlands biome. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the End Highlands biome um, doesn't actually exist in the native end. It only exists in the gateway that appears after you kill the Ender Dragon. But another way of telling where the End Highlands is is that that's the biome that cities spawn on. So assuming that we can find end cities outside of the end, we should be fine uh, without having to kill the dragon. So what I'm going to do is even though I do technically have the location of an end gate marked because, you know, obviously um, I had to find one for law purposes to build a station around. I've actually found several ender portals. As you can see from that waypoint right there, I found three as of placing that one down. So we're going to go to a nun uh, roleplay based one just to head on in because I mean it, it's it's it, it'll just save us a lot of time and effort I remember I was flying over the ocean trying to get back to my base a while ago And I spotted this underneath really hard to spot But I saw the stone brick and I thought hmm what structures are made out of stone brick And I sunk down and I looked through the bars and look what's in there it's an ender portal. Only two of the things in the frame have been completed, but I'm pretty sure that we have uh, some eyes of ender in the system. We only have two. I've got to go all the way back, but before I go and go all the way back, let me just put down a waystone to make my life far easier. Here we go. Okay, I'm back with the eyes of ender. I can hear a silverfish, and I have no idea where it is. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep an eye out for that. Uh, but if we just plop these on in, there we go. Ender portal. Now I've got my matter receivers and my matter transmitters. Uh, let me grab actually before I jump in. Uh, another waystone, because I know I won't be able to access the terminal once I'm in there. So uh, I, I don't want to leave anything in there that I need. And uh, yeah, in we go. Tally-ho! And here we are. The end dimension. That's the ender dragon boss bar right there. So. Oh, hello. What are you? End prosperity ore. Hmm, very interesting. Uh, ooh, what are you? 
Azure silver ore. What are you used for? A raw azure silver blocks. Azure ingots and azure ingots are used for a bunch of stuff, really, looking at this. Nothing really all that unique, though. Kind of just looks like another ore. Oh, yeah, you're here, aren't you? <laughs> Forgot about that. Are your wings purple? What? Why are your wings purple? That's new. Ow, ow, do you mind, Mrs.? Right, okay. Well, assuming that there's just going to be none of, like, the ore that we're looking for directly on the island. Oh, dimensional shards. Nice. Um. Oh, that's a fireball. Right. Uh, I'm just going to go. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go this way. I'm just going to fly off into the end. And I'm going to pull the map up, uh, if, if it'll let me. There we go. Uh, and we're just going to go. Until we come across the other end islands. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to AFK here in the void. And uh, I shall be with you shortly. Aha, I knew we'd come across something soon. What the hell is all of that? Very interesting. I've never seen what the end looks like in this mod pack before. Genuinely, never been to the end at all in Anadonia. This all looks wild. This is beautiful, by the way. This is beautiful. This is interesting. This looks like a dungeon. Oh, we've got an end slime island. I forgot about these. That's end brick. Hang on. That's odd. But what are you? This is a tree. Lignite or an etherstone. What's lignite? Silicon, feature dimlets. I'm guessing it's just a replacement for coal. Skulk. Oh, it's end skulk. That's freaky. End skulk? And are these lanterns hanging off the island? Oh, this... Pr I've always said the end in any mod pack. When it has stuff like this, it is beautiful. Is this a, an end village? Is this an end pillager outpost? Phantoms? Oh, no. Oh, no. There's phantoms. A loot shulker. Please tell me that in this armor I'm immune to shulkers. Please, I beg. What's in the shulker? Oh my god, hello, dragon scales? Oh, this was so worth it. Oh, I didn't bring any backpacks and I can't access my terminal. Well, now's as good a time as any to test this out. End village. Please, I'm begging. Oh, that is brilliant. It can. Oh, we are so back. We are so back. Okay, since we can't access the terminal when we're in the end, what I'm going to say we should do is we should grab our backpacks. I'm going to grab two, and they are both empty, I believe. Yes, they're both empty. So we've got a lot of looting space, which is good. We're going to go back, we're going to loot the thing, and then we're going to specifically search for the end Highlands biome so we can get our hands on that unobtainium. I don't know where all these phantoms came from, but if they're native to this biome, then we're leaving this biome. We're in an imperious grove. Ooh, purple. What is this? Shulkran wart. Shulkran wart. We're in a shulkran forest. I've just realized, because of all of the extra biomes, it's going to be even harder to find end highlands, isn't it? I don't suppose there's any already on the map, is there? Wait, I hear that... You. Why are you everywhere? You're so irritating. This feels like an important structure, but I don't know what it's for. Ooh, this looks like it could be End Highlands. This is a shattered desert. Never mind. Ooh, yellow forest. What's this one called? Nightshade Forest. The grass is blue. Oh, this is so pretty. It's so alien. I love it. Could do without the radiation sounds. Oh, I hope it's not just shattered desert forever, forever though. Oh. Now that's interesting. I forgot. These things just spawn out here. You don't have to kill the dragon if you can find one. If I mark this down on the map as Ender Gateway... I don't have any Ender Pearls on me because I didn't realize I'd need to carry them. So let's just kill one of these guys. What are they gonna do? Say no? Oh, stop being a baby. You're dead. Get over it. Right then, so. In we go. What? 
What? Your kit off, oh, for God's sake! I think I vastly misunderstood how the end dimension works. Well, back to finding some highlands, I guess. Well, we're in the Vissel Isles right now. The Purple Peaks. What is this? Fortnite. The Purple Peaks. Is this a crashed boat? Is this one of the end ships? It is. Kind of terrible loot, but you know. Ah, uh, this is the good one. End city. Okay, good. So, end cities. Ah, oh, this one's in the bulbous garden still. I guess that's just like vanilla Minecraft that they only spawn in the end highlands. Ah, okay. Well, I mean, we've still got an end city that we can loot. So, you know, let me just clear this place out, see if it's got anything worth taking. Pretty small one, actually. And no pirate ship, either. Is there really no loot in this entire thing? Then what was the point in coming here? Genuinely, no loot in any of those towers. And from the looks of it, there's nothing down here, either, except for more shulkers. Shulkers don't count as good loot. They don't count as loot at all. They're shulkers. Okay, 8,000 blocks out, still haven't found and then Highlands, but I found whatever the hell this is. It looked, or at least from the uh, from the top, like um, a, an end fortress. But it's very clearly not, and I don't know what it's meant to be either. Wait, I remember what these are. This is a dungeon. We have one of these under the Anadonia base. Yeah, pointless building. <sighs> oh well, time to keep looking. Okay, this is about as close as we've gotten so far to the end highlands. We're in the end midlands, which is kind of funny because I live in the east midlands. Um, oh, Enderby. And that right there is another fortress. We're leaving the end midlands to go and say hi to it, but it's still another fortress. And this one looks very big. I mean, we're back in the end midlands now, which is good. Uh, oh, it's right next, next to a buried boat as well. That's cool. Let's have a look through this thing. Wow, beetroot seeds. That's such... Oh, that's pretty cool. That's such an interesting thing to find in an end city beetroot seeds. The hell is a chorus, Paul? Interesting. Huh. Orb of temporary flight. Um, almost like I don't need that right now. Nice, though. Okay, so the entire thing's been cleared out. There was no... A uh, ship in this one, but that doesn't really matter because we're not looking for the ship right now. We are looking for the end highlands, okay? We've reached the end midlands, so assuming that it works similar to how the ender portal works If this ring right here is the midlands Then if we go this distance out this way somewhere down here in the 20,000s We might see the highlands Hopefully. Is that a red fire? I've not seen this biome yet. What's this? The cryptic wastes. That's cool. I like that. And that's another city and that's a ship. Well, not like we need it, but... We now have an elytra. Hell yeah. Obviously, we need the elytra to craft elytra templates. We can also combine it with a dragon scale to... I don't know. Oh, make a copy. Got it. That's actually a really smart thing. If we can grab a dragon scale, we can just copy this. Nice. All right, let's just uh, go through this thing and loot it for what it's worth. Let's leave these things alone. Let's just grab the loot. Okay, cool. We've grabbed everything we can from that. Let's keep going forwards and hope that one of these ends up being highlands. But considering how plain this place is getting, I'm kind of really hopeful. Sorry, is this a nether portal in the end? Is this an abandoned end nether portal? What is the point of this? I mean, even the achievement right there just said the useless portal before it got shuffled off screen because my game doesn't seem to understand what it means to just run normally like a game. I mean, I originally just came over here to look at the pretty, pretty, pretty uh, my light crystals that we're coming out of this tower, but look! Look at where we are! Look at the biome name! We're in the end highlands now. This is where the ore spawns that we're looking for. So I'm gonna tear this biome apart. Or at least I would if the game didn't crash. Oh, that's really not good. Turns out unobtainium can't be mined with the destruction catalyst. 
I'm going to need an actual vibranium pickaxe if I want this thing. And all of my vibranium is in the wireless terminal. Uh-oh. Guess I've got to go back and make a dedicated pickaxe this time. I'm genuinely surprised. Can't loophole my way around this one. Okay, so quite interestingly, there's no such thing as a regular vibranium pickaxe. You can only make uh, all the modium tools... Uh, that are alloys. So, for example, the pickaxe would require all the modium and an unobtainium vibranium alloy, which it doesn't tell you how to get, by the way. I'm assuming you have to just put it together in a crafting window. Doesn't tell you. But one thing you can do is you can melt them down into specific pickaxe heads and make tinker's materials out of them. So I'm going to make a tinker's pickaxe for the first time in what has to be since the start of the series out of vibranium. But, you can't just make it out of regular, like, um, in a regular Tinker Smeltery. No, 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 no. When it comes to melting down these special ores, you actually have to use soul lava, which comes from the other. It's this blue stuff that didn't do anything originally, that just set fire to everything around it. Turns out, it does have a use. You have to put it in your smeltery as the only way to actually melt this metal. How do I empty this? It doesn't have a full bucket in it. I'm just gonna make a new one. Then we put the soul lava in here, and this should start smelting down the vibranium. Brilliant. Now that we've got the vibranium, I should be able to just plug this back in with no adverse effects. Either way, now I need a pickaxe casting thing. Now, it's been a while, so I don't actually remember how to do this sort of stuff. Okay, Tinker Station. Pickaxe requires a head, a handle, and a binding. So I need a pickaxe head, I need the tool binding, and I need the tool handle, I believe. Head. Poor. Vibranium. Poor. Next thing I need is the stone tool binding. And once again, vibranium. Stone tool handle. Gold. There we go. Brilliant. So, with all of these parts now in hand, we can go over to the Tinker Station, make ourselves the vibranium pickaxe. And I don't know much about Tinkers, but I know that just by default, this is a really good pickaxe. We can head back to the end, and we can grab ourselves that unobtainium. Oh, that was near instant. I love that. That was brilliant. Okay, let's try and find some more. Hopefully it'll all be on the surface like those two to make my life really easy. I doubt it will be, but it's worth thinking about. It's worth hoping for. And I was wrong. It's all going to be buried underground. But that's fine because, I mean, hey, we got those two for free. That has to count for something. Well, damn, all of this destruction, all of this destruction, and I, I have found one, count them, one more unobtainium ore. This is even rarer than all the modium. I swear on it. Still, it's good to finally find another one. And here we have another one. Just one, just one. Nice. Okay, so after a lot, and I mean a lot of digging, um, I managed to get just enough an obtainium uh, for a full suit of armor. Uh, that is after having ground, grind, 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 grind. That's not a word. That is after having ground it down. Um, what I ended up doing is I ended up using one of the unobtainium I managed to get to make an unobtainium site potion. Uh, and then I went through all three. And even then, I barely got enough. I even had to hop over to another island. I cannot stress to you just how rare unobtainium is. It is called unobtainium for a reason. Uh, but yeah, in the end, after deleting a good chunk of this island, and oh, my game's crashing, that's interesting, I managed to get enough unobtainium. But yeah, since obviously, quite, quite obviously, uh, we have a set of unobtainium armor now, all except for the helmet, because I was actually leaving that so that I could do it on camera. There we go. I believe we have enough unobtainium that we could create an entire second set for ourselves. Because if you remember, this this is supposed to be for Ruby. So if we, if we make another set of this all for us, we should have the resources for that. Oh, that's interesting. The helmet gives us Dragonforge Fire Brick, Dragonforge Ice Brick, and a Dragonforge Lightning Brick. That's very interesting. And the Unobtainium Sight gives us Iron Sight because we 
We definitely need that now. I'm not sure what these are used for. All I know is they're used for creating the specific... Uh, I'm guessing cores that you forge the dragon blades in, which is quite interesting. I'll just pop them away for now. That's quite annoying, though. We don't quite have enough all the modium for a full set. Just enough for the helmet and chest piece. We might have to use this final bit of all the modium site in order to complete this set of armor. Let's go grind some of this down, though, since we've still got some in here, apparently. Nice, we've got another three storage cells in the system as well. And it looks like we're only one of these off of getting a fourth, which is pretty amazing. Uh, we're one off of getting the trousers, and then we're four off of getting the actual uh, full set of armor. So we only need to collect five more bits of all the modium, which we don't even need five, if we're being honest because we can crush it down. That's that's pretty good. But while we're here, we might as well already start pre-upgrading these things. You know, we can turn the all the modium into vibranium. There we go. And then we can do the same thing with the chest piece. Although from the looks of it, we might actually be running low on vibranium as well. We might not have enough of that either, which is fun. Right, let's grab this last bit of all the modium side. Let's make one more uh, vibranium side. I don't think I actually did that one, did I? No, I skipped over vibranium side because there was that much of it in the, uh, in the, in the biome. Ooh, although while we're here down in the mines, we, uh, we might want to put this helmet back on just so we can actually see stuff. I think that'd be a smart decision there. Right then, let's drink up, and then it's showtime. You know what? Not a bad haul. One potion got me nine all the modium. I reckon, with the grinder, that actually might be enough. Hopefully. There we go, that's the bottom half of the all the modium kit sorted. We are definitely gonna need more vibranium, though. Let's, uh, let's finish waiting for the rest of this all the modium to smelt. Then we're gonna go get the rest of the vibranium, and we're gonna upgrade this to unobtainium, and then we'll have two sets. One for each of us. Okay, so Vintium only uh, spawns in this type of biome. So I'm just gonna move from biome to biome, and I'm gonna skim the surface, because it's a really common biome. And then if I see anything of value, I'm just gonna rip it up from the ground. Wait, hang on, no, I'm in the wrong biome, I didn't even notice. I need to be in a crimson forest. This is a wasteland. Got it, okay. Let's see if we can find any crimson forests nearby. So I have no idea if they spawn in warped forests in the other or not, uh, but it's worth just scanning the area anyway, because on the off chance that it is, that increases the amount of biomes that we know it spawns in from, you know, one to two. I'm seeing a lot of diamond, and there we have it. We do have vibranium, which means it spawns in a warped forest and a crimson forest. I'm assuming that means it just spawns in any type of forest, which really works in our favor here. Once again, this is probably the easiest of all of the ores for us to get our hands on. It just spawns everywhere, especially on the surface of the netherrack. Genuinely really helpful. We will not be short on vibranium. Okay, yeah, so after doing a relatively thorough sweep of the area, uh, we now have 43 vibranium ore. This is not rare, and we are going home because, wow, we do not need any more of that, probably ever. So, uh, let's head back now. And let's drop it on in. And now we wait, but not for long. Right then, that's given us, oh, that's given us plenty, a stack and 11 of the vibranium. Let's go smelt this bad baby up. And uh, then we'll be able to finish our second set of unobtainium armor, which is insane to say out loud. That's the trousers. And we are one short of doing the feet. We are no longer one short of doing the feet. We have done the feet. Right then, all we've got to do now is we're going to surround this bad baby with the unobtainium. So helmet first, then the chest plate, then the trousers. And you are kidding, we're too short? We're too short? You're joking me, we're too short? 
Why is it telling me that I can do these again? No way. Is the quest line broken? Is the quest line broken? Oh, that would be funny as... But that's really a pain in the ass. If we're too unobtainium short... Oh, this is the hardest stuff to get. Uh, fine, I'll leave that smelting and I'll just... I will do my best to find two more pieces of unobtainium. Oh, there's one. And I know we could potentially grind down that grind that down into two, but I can't confirm whether or not it would 100% give us two. Or can I? Yeah, it's only a 30% chance that it'll give us two. Only a 30% chance it'll double. And to be completely honest, I don't like those odds. I've never been a lucky kind of guy. Right then, time to do some soul searching. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. That works brilliantly for us. That is my favorite thing to see. When it's just on the surface, brilliant. Right then, let's head back home. And please tell me we're lucky. How much do we get from that? Three. Okay, one of them doubled. And you know what? One of them is better than none of them doubling. That's some pretty good odds. Let's go smelt these up, and all we're gonna do, we're gonna put the boots in place, do this, 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 and this, and there we go. Another set of unobtainium armor. Two sets of unobtainium armor. And even more Dragonforge blocks, because apparently this quest is super bugged or something, I don't know. But there we have it. Two sets of Dragonforge armor. This has been a task that has taken me about three days. And I'm gonna be honest, I wanna see my family. So we're sort of, we're, we're gonna start winding down today's episode now. Uh, I'm gonna put these down in the basement if you'd like to follow me down. And we're just gonna place this armor on this armor stand right here. This was uh, going to originally be the thing I was gonna use to gift Ruby the ultimate tools when he last saw it, but uh, I didn't have any of this prepared back then. Though now, I can safely say, I've certainly got one hell of a surprise waiting for him, because look at that beauty of an armor. Now, final thing I want to do before we finish off today's session. And let's very quickly now check on just how many crystals this thing has produced for us while we've been flitting about. Ooh, that's not that many! Ah, uh, I guess that's what I get for not being in the overworld for most of this time. Oh boy, I need a lot more than that. At Envirotech, for the tier 2 alone, I need 6. I have enough for 2 of these. But I don't just need the Void Miner, I also need the tier 2 panels, or rather the frames, the tier 2 IO blocks. And each one of these tier 2 not only requires the tier 1, but it requires an Erodium Interconnect, which is 2 of these Erodium Crystals. So, I, I, I am, I do not have enough. This is not going fast enough. So I'm gonna have to AFK on this thing a little longer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay logged in. I'm just gonna AFK here and let this thing tick over in the background. But, like I mentioned, this is the end of today's episode. So if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to leave a like down below. If you have a comment about what happened in any of, in, in, in any part of today's episode, leave a comment down below. If you enjoy my whole witty banter, or just my personality in general, make sure to hit subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's it from me. In case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. See you later, guys. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye. Bye 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 yeah bye